What are stereotypes and why do we have them? Stereotypes are overgeneralized ideas about a group of people. We use stereotypes because it's an efficient way to categorize the information we perceive every day. And thus, we fall into our comfort zone, where we have enough info about all the people we face every day. I wish I could tell you more about this, but unfortunately, sociology is not my middle name. So let me move to the one thing everybody enjoys and excels at, talking about themselves. My name is Leila, and I was born in the Soviet Union to a Ukrainian mother and a Syrian father. Right after my birth, my family moved to Syria, specifically to the capital, Damascus. Um, there I started studying medicine 18 years later. Um, almost at my fourth year of studies, um, a year after the chaos had started in Syria, uh, I was half kidnapped. Half because I managed to get out. And uh, yeah, I intended to take a cab that day to meet a friend, but suddenly we were on a highway connecting Damascus with the southern cities and Lebanon. And uh, despite the tear gas, the taxi driver kept spraying into my face. I managed to call my best friend. She herself called my brother-in-law and gave him my coordinates. He sent a few cars to look for me. And uh, yeah, few very, very long minutes later, I managed to get out because the driver pulled over and I ran away and I escaped the scenario which awaited most of the kidnapping victims, getting tortured, filmed and then killed. The motivation of, is, of this kidnapping is um, still in the dark for me. I still don't know why this happened. But um, yeah, although I managed to uh, recover my healthy vision a few months later, the fear in my heart, which I carried years later on, only began to evolve, knowing that my city, previously known to be one of the safest on Earth, was no longer an option for me. It was the only place where I feel home, where I belong. So I had to leave. And my family and I decided that I should move to Germany and I should continue my studies here. And here I am. <laughs> Arriving in Germany. When I first arrived in Germany, I joined a language class to learn the language, and I was often confronted with the question, wo kommst du her? Where do you come from? At that time, only very few of my friends knew actually where Syria is, which was totally okay, no problem. But as time passed by, my country started invading the news, and I was constantly reminded of the horrible war, even on the small screens on the subway trains. But let me here introduce my country. Syria, located at the heart of the world, at least if you see the perspective of this map, it has, <laughs> it has a population of 18.5 million and is around half the size of Germany. Syria con belongs also to the Arab world, consisting of 22 countries, uh, well, both in Asia and uh, Africa. Facts and figures. In preparation of this talk, I have asked people what they think of when they hear the words Syria or Syrians. And as you could imagine, the most frequent uh, answer I got was refugee or war. Well, today I don't want to talk about war. I want to show you the other face of Syria. Um, a very surprising contradiction for me is how unknown Syria is, despite its rich history. Think of Syria as just another small third world country in the Middle East? No. <laughs> Damascus is actually one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities since 8000 BC. And in Ugarit, now known as Ras al-Shamra, was not only the oldest verified alphabet worldwide discovered, the Phoenician alphabet, but also its home to the oldest melody known in history, the Hurrian hymn. How can a country with such rich history be unknown for many? But anyway, let me now start breaking the stereotypes for you, and maybe many of them will not sound that unfamiliar. First, Syrians speak Syrian or Syrians speak Persian. One quick answer, we speak Arabic. 
And uh, I mean, we do have Syrian is just another dialect, just like Germans have in different parts of uh, Germany or Austria or Switzerland. But um, yeah, one thing to say is uh, the whole Arab world, so around 420 million people can communicate using the same language, the standard or high Arabic. Second, Syria is all desert. Many people think Syria has a yellow landscape that we ride camels to schools or not so sure, live in tents. So is this true? It's quite tricky to break this one, to be honest, <laughs> because it is quite true. I mean, we do neither live in tents or ride camels to school, definitely. But uh, the Syrian desert does cover 50% of the area. But we also have a variety of landscape of mountains, hills, uh, the sea, uh, lakes, and uh, even our Mount Hermon, as you see in the picture here, the highest mountain in uh, Syria at uh, 2,814 meters, is almost as high as the highest peak in Germany, the Zugspitze. Uh, we also have a variety of fauna, like deer, wolves, and bears, and uh, rodents, and the Syrian hamster, self-explanatory. <laughs> was also discovered in the north of Syria. The weather in Syria is dry, hot, and it never snows. No, we do have four seasons. Here's a photo of a snowy Damascus taken from last year. Now I'd like to tell you a small story. A um, few days, not few days, few years ago, <laughs> I intended to take a cab in Berlin because I needed to catch my train to Dresden. And it was early morning hours, I admit, maybe not the best time, but the taxi driver asked me, where do you come from? And I hesitantly said, from Syria. He shrugged and he rolled his eyes, not a look of satisfaction. But anyway, as we approached our destination, um, he sneezed. So I said spontaneously, Gesundheit, or bless you. But he did not uh, say danke or thank you in return. But his answer was, Sie haben aber etwas Erziehung für ein Flüchtling. You have some manners for a refugee. I smiled and I did not comment, <laughs> because we Syrians, we say Gesundheit if somebody chokes, coughs, or, <laughs> of course, also sneezes. And we, saw also, we say also Naiman when somebody leaves the shower as in bliss. We say Allah if somebody trips as in may God protect you. And we also say um, daime, when we finish our food, as may we always have food on our table. Not only in words, but also in action. Syrians are known for their generous hospitality. So they are more than ready to offer their time, a place to sleep, a Syrian table, a table full of food, basically, uh, for any guest uh, who comes over from a foreign or not foreign country. And in Syria, you don't need any GPS, which I'm not sure works there anyway. But uh, because uh, <laughs> uh, you can ask anybody, and there are a numerous number of people who will go out of their way to direct you to, the, to your destination. To move to my next point, are all Syrians Muslims? Well, there are two very wrong misconceptions in the stereotypical world about Arabs. The first one is, Arab equals Saudi. Well, this is definitely wrong because Saudi Arabia is just another country in the Arab world and uh, they have their very individual <laughs> laws and culture. The second one is um, Arab equals uh, Muslim. This is also wrong, although we have a huge number of Muslims, but actually the um, most number of Muslims worldwide, they reside uh, not in the Arab world, but in countries like Indonesia, uh, Pakistan, and India. Let's take a look at the Syrian population. As you see in the chart, 70% in blue of uh, Syrian population are Muslims, 16% are Christians, but we also have 10% of non-religious people, 1% uh, of um, Jewish people, and 3% of other sects. Does everybody wave alcohol and pork? Um, well, as we have a freedom of belief, we also have a freedom of uh, food choice. So, of course, you can buy alcohol in many supermarkets, uh, in many restaurants and so. And we even, 
I know nobody knows about this, but we have our own beer brand, Al Shadeh, and also Barada. Probably not the most famous worldwide, but it does exist. Um, pork is also available to buy in different restaurants and uh, yeah, special neighborhoods, maybe more Christian, but it does exist. And you don't need a license for that. Are all females forced to wear a veil or a hijab? There is absolutely no law in Syria that forces any female to wear a veil or a hijab. And uh, <laughs> uh, of course, I mean, uh, it's absolutely an individual decision, but even in schools, nobody will make sure your clothes matches uh, your religion or so. And both Christians with a veil as well as Muslims without one are socially accepted. Syrians don't celebrate Christmas. I just said we have a good fraction of Christians, so yes, we do. Here's a photo of a decorated Damascus with Christmas lights. Not only we have decorations, but we also have a Santa Claus distributing candy and small uh, gifts for children. Uh, Syria was, uh, Damascus was also home to the biggest Christmas tree uh, in the Arab world, of course, uh, 27 meters. Let's talk about looks. Many people think a stereotypical uh, Arab uh, person would probably, for a man, look like this. And for a woman, like this or this. So let's, uh, let me introduce my friends. Rawad, Milda, Muhammad, Rawand, sitting here in the audience, <laughs> Yazan, and Lana. In a country like Syria, with a very complex history and different ethnicities, like Aramians, Armenians, Circassians, Chechens, Assyrians, and Kurds, it's really hard to speak of a particular look which represents everybody. We are diverse and we are mixed. We have all hair colors, eye colors, and body types. Uh, of the prominent people with Assyrian heritage are Steve Jobs, born to a Syrian father, and Jerry Seinfeld, born to a Syrian Jewish mother. Is everybody called Muhammad? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I do know 45 Muhammads and 23 Ahmads. It's true. But, I mean, it's just a popular name in the Muslim community. And, I mean, let's face it. Are the Germans any more creative with their Max, Moritz, and Maria options? <laughs> women are oppressed and controlled. Yes, women are oppressed and controlled, but not all of them. And it's quite funny to say I have never felt more womenly than in my own home country. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that Syria is the leading country with women uh, rights or gender equality. But is there no silver lining of being the delicate, fragile sex? <laughs> I mean, all men stand up if you enter a bus to offer their seats. Uh, boys will offer to carry your grocery bags from the supermarket. And uh, also, if your car breaks in the middle of the road, there will be a number of men jumping under it to fix, even if they don't know how to. Or they will even push it or stand by and give an advice or a suggestion. There are definitely things which I miss about being home. Getting complimented from my male friends on a night out in a legally non-harassing way. And their urgency to accompany us girls when it's getting late. But are women really oppressed? I mean, a general look on the Syrian woman will give the impression she is oppressed because on one side, we do have the distinct gender roles. So, I mean, women like to stay home and take care of the kids. But on the other hand, in the last years, there are many women who focus on their career and education and are high achieving. Even in politics, women have attained important roles like the Minister of Culture, Social Affairs, Labour, and even the current political advisor in Syria is a woman. Let's integrate. <clears throat> a year after I have arrived and lived in Berlin, I only had foreigner friends. And I thought it's time to look for German ones and integrate them into my integrational process. And um, yeah, I asked Google 
how should I find friends? And the Google search recommended me uh, joining a class or a hobby where I meet my potential peers on a regular basis. So I was really doing all sorts of things. I joined girls' uh, couch surfing writing groups. I was also in different uh, jam, musical jam sessions, but also in international uh, improvisation theater. I met random people for a tofu kebab or a cucumber smoothie. And still, I did not manage. And then I started to question my social skills. What am I doing wrong? And then I learned that in Germany, it takes really much more time and effort, and also patience, to make a friendship. But then it's also stronger. Whereas in Syria, you meet somebody in the university, you smile, you strike a conversation, you have food, you exchange numbers, you're best friends by the first day. That is considered rather superficial in Germany. But anyhow, by the end of my third year living in Berlin, I did manage to make two German friends, of which I was really proud. But then I had to move to Dresden because of my medical studies. Anyway, uh, among the classes which I, uh, which I joined uh, in Berlin was ballet classes. And being the brilliant dancer which I am, just kidding, I'm actually just okay. Um, <laughs> well, my teacher asked me, where did I get my liberal ballet training in a country where uh, women are uh, oppressed and may not attend elementary school and culture is backwards? Culture from Syria, what's that? I did my ballet training, photos of me, in our national ballet school located in Damascus, uh, Syria. And uh, required for admission are only actually a nominal amount of money, but also potential talents. Not only the school of dance was almost free, but universities in Syria are almost cost free, and schools are free and compulsory till ninth grade. English and French are mandatory languages. And uh, German statistics show that two-thirds of uh, Syrian refugees arriving in Germany have already attained their high school diploma. So having the 12-year school system, just like in Germany, we are allowed to enter university immediately. Uh, Ahmed Jude, a fellow TEDx speaker and also a dancer uh, from Syria, was rescued by the D Dutch National Ballet. And he's a graduate from the Higher Institute of uh, well, uh, dramatic arts, but also dance and music, located in Damascus. Uh, Khaled al-Assad, a famous archaeologist. Um, he was uh, head of antiquities uh, in Palmyra for over 40 years. But in 2015, he, he was uh, detained by the ISIS, and then he was tortured and then beheaded at 83 years old because he re refused to reveal the location of the hidden artifacts of Tadmar. Inanna, a dance troupe, was also created in Syria, had made tours worldwide in Europe and the uh, US, and have now two dance schools in both Dubai and Canada. Uh, Tamam Azzam, a graduate from the Faculty of Fine Arts in Damascus, uh, had a work art which went viral online, the Freedom Graffiti, explaining the power of love in a war-torn country. Another work of his is the Bon Voyage Damascus. <coughs> Why do I stand to break stereotypes here today? A few days ago, I was having a chat with my potential new boyfriend, Christian, from Tinder. And, and we were really getting along, and... Yeah, then, I mean, I had the dreaded question, probably upon my brilliant German grammar. Anyway, he asked me, where do you come from? And uh, I wrote him from Syria, one has to be honest, it's Tinder. And, <laughs> and then he disappeared into thin air. So I stand here today to say, Christian, if you're listening to me, please come back. <laughs> There's a world to discover, don't you think? Rafi Shami, a very famous uh, German-Syrian author, wrote in his book, Eine deutsche Leidenschaft namens Nudelsalat, that he wants to um, live as an Arab but die as German. Because, for example, in terms of funerals, 
Syrians tend to cry and scream their hearts out, whereas Germans more eased exchange some food and coffee in their Leichenschmaus. Why not really invest our energy in building bridges that connect us intellectually, socially, and emotionally, instead of setting them on fire? Mother Teresa said, if you judge people, you have no time to love them. Thank you.